That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's mine. Ladies and gentlemen, you have gathered here today for the ultimate testing of ability. Mono a mono, man versus man. Two men enter the cage of destiny. One comes out victorious. That's right. It's the trash rats, rats in a cage matchup. The one and only Gonzo School coming in to take down the king himself. The bount rounder himself, the king of the knife the children's suicide influencer, the one and only Rusty Cage. Oh, geez, man. I, I, didn't re- I didn't realize we were going full steam as a fight. but uh, That's right. But welcome, Gonzo. And I'm also here. <laughs> and also Reactor. So, um, so Gonzo, uh, should we call you Gonzo, or do you have a different name you like to go by? Oh, you can just, you can just call him School. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can school? call me School. No, you can call me okay. Gonzo, that's fine. True. Yeah, so so Gonzo, of course, is the one who made the uh, the initial video that we've been kind of talking about on the past few episodes of the podcast. Uh, it was uh, Rusty Cage copyright for the, and it was, I guess, not a takedown. We were calling it a takedown, but I don't think that you would agree that that's what it was. More of just maybe a criticism of how I talked about the Knife Game song Melody. And then also, you had a follow-up video where you were comparing uh, that melody with other melodies to say, you know, show the similarities. Yeah, I think that one was called mm-hmm. Rusty Cage Copyright Cuck. <laughs> Co- Huge <laughs> Cuck. Copyright. No, 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 no. See, that's what this debate is going to be. Uh, de- <laughs> potentially. About how much you actually hate Rusty? <laughs> no, no. It's going to... No, but it's, it was Copyright Cope, I think, was the, the live stream. I think copyright cuck would fit too. Copyright cuck. Now there were a few things on that second video. Uh, I didn't watch the entire thing because I was just trying to hit like all the major points I think you were mm-hmm. making, and uh, I thought it was a uh, a pretty solid video, even though I didn't necessarily agree with everything you were saying. But I'm I'm interested. How would you describe your intentions on that initial video that you put out? The in, the so the first video. Mm-hmm. Um, my intention is essentially to point out the the issue at the individual level mm-hmm. um, of copyright and how it's used as a censorship tool. It's it's basically used to hurt artists, and unfortunately, I think the the people who are largely <laughs> allowing this to happen, fostering this to happen, are artists. Um, right. So that was basically my point. So it's a real life, I believe a real life example of why it can be a problem because one artist will say, you know, my, you know, my work, you know, has been stolen and then, you know, they'll use someone else's work at another time or they did it in the past. And so it's like, everybody steals, everybody you know, everybody makes derivative stuff. We've all been influenced. There is no vacuum for art. The main difference is that when Rusty does it, it's intentional. Usually, yeah. When he's Usually. ripping off art, he's like, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be as malicious as possible, <laughs> find something yeah. that nobody's talking about, and make it my own. He had me fooled. I'll get into that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I had everyone fooled until I realized that I was <laughs> I was incorrect. Well, okay, so so more specifically, like, uh, you, you made me the main focus of the video while I think the overall topic was just, you know, should there be, should mm-hmm. music be copyrighted? But one of the words that kept coming up was that I was a, uh, I was a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. That's and right. And I think that you kind of, uh, you kind of misinterpreted what I was saying in the the clip that you used was from one of my question and answer videos where uh, someone had asked me, am I tired of getting tagged in the Ken dog drip like me, <laughs> which, which I at the time uh, had thought that, you know, the knife game song was the only song that I'd heard that was just similar enough to um, that. I could say, yeah, I made that now. Uh, what what my complaint was was I just wanted to play the Ken Dog song, and since I do technically have a copyright on the composition of the music and the lyrics because that's how they separate it whenever you do get a copyright on it, 
um, I was upset because I couldn't play the Ken Dog version because UMG, I think it was UMG, that uh, owns the Ken Dog song, blocked it, which I thought that was funny. They're using mm-hmm. their copyright to stop me from playing the song. So that was my grievance. But I don't think I, I didn't take any actions. I didn't sue Ken Dog. I didn't try to do a takedown or anything at all. It was just uh, me saying, yeah, well, I can't even play it because uh, because they have a copyright on just even the melody. I didn't use like the lyrics. I was just using the clip that had the melody in it. So, so again, I, I ask, what part of that makes me a hypocrite? Well, the hypocritical thing is when you... <laughs> When you make music, and I can understand if somebody's like not a musician and they don't understand, but you know they understand that the uh, you know the the <laughs> methods of making music are limited. There are only so many notes, only so many chord progressions, and essentially, if you come out and you just say like you know like <laughs> maybe somebody steals your work, right? They they so called steal your work you've also stolen from other people, you know? And so there isn't really like, (laughs) it's kind of to be expected. It's like with hip hop music, when hip hop has started, it was, you know, laying down, it was taking beats actually from pre-existing songs. And at the time it was like a legal gray area. And it was like, Hmm, well, I guess this is okay. Everybody's doing it. So they're sampling these records and they're making beats and they're layering them and kind of making them into something different. <clears throat> and you know everybody thought that was fine until a legal action happened and finally the record companies came out and said you can't do this anymore and they sued all these artists for it and so the problem is is that when one person wants to say i own this and you don't even own it we don't own ideas we don't own melodies we don't <laughs> we don't treat these things like real property but the law wants us to the law gets us thinking that we own these melodies and these things like physical property. Um, well, what, why, why would it not be physical property? Essentially, everything is physical, but why? Because you you're, can't handle I, I, I do want to get into that. You were yeah. saying like, well, you can handle a record or in the sense of um, a, a lot of these record companies that were suing the hip hop artists, they weren't suing because of the musical composition. They were suing because... Oh, probably that too, recording. but also because yeah. of the recording. Yeah, so they own that recording. Now, you can say sound isn't physical, but obviously it's a physical thing that we interact with all the time. Now, is it something you can hold in your hand, and is, is that what you describe as physical? And that's the thing. So only if it's something you can hold in your hand is it something that you actually own. Is that a point that you were making? Y- yeah, pretty much. I mean, you can have like the the... I mean... There's, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of like another way you could cut it, but pretty much like, you, you know, you own the deed to a house, you have a physical house, you have a physical car, you have a physical, you know, but when you own the copyright to a melody, you basically own the copyright to math. Um, you own the copyright to something that anybody could reproduce and not know that they've even reproduced it. Um, I don't think that's so, true. Okay. I, like if I that, if I painted a picture of a German shepherd, it's not going to be exactly the same as one of the most famous pictures or paintings of a German shepherd that exists. Well, it's going to well, be slightly in, different in my own way. Yeah, but that's a unless painting. Unless like, I photocopy mm-hmm. the most famous painting of a German shepherd. Well, yeah, obviously with with paintings and like visual art it's going to be a little bit different, but with music like for example, like a uh, uh, there's this uh Ted talk of this copyright lawyer. I put it in the description, I think on the live stream, I didn't get the chance to talk about it, but it was basically, he was talking about a bunch of different lawsuits over melodies. And one of them was Tom Petty. And of course he has the song and it's like, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. And another artist had written a song and it was a, yeah, yeah. And it was just a totally like, I don't want to say it was like a totally different context, but it was a different vibe to the song. There was a lot of different stuff going on and he used the same melody and his claim was that he'd, he'd never even heard Tom Petty's song. He's like, dude, That's, I haven't I even doubt heard that. this song. It's one of the most famous songs in the world. 
No, but we, I mean, reactor, well, we say that. I think about this a lot. Like, we're older than Sam Smith, and probably, I mean, it's very possible that, like, because I think in that TED talk, uh, they referenced the fact that uh, Sam Smith said he um, was born, af- obviously, born after the song even came out. Like, it's po- plausible that he never heard this major hit that came out 30 yeah, years before he was sure. born. Who, Maybe he never life heard is it- music. And he's never heard one of the most famous songs in the world. Uh, well, sure, it, it could. It also could. It could be a subconscious thing too. You could hear something, and not. And like later, you're going to write a song, and you're just kind of like fiddling around the keyboard. I have a personal story of one time I was actually sitting at a keyboard in the presence of some friends, and I was just like kind of noodling around, and I made this riff, and it was like da 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 da. And somebody said, "Oh, that's sunglasses at night." And I was like, what? <laughs> and it oh, was a yeah, song right, I'd right. never heard before. And, the, and then I listened to it. And I was like, wow, that is the same thing. So you can accidentally copy something. And if that happens to make it into a published song, it happens to be a hit, then they can sue you for it and claim yeah. that. But you know, part of, it is, part of it is that it becomes a hit because it's already a hit. So if I accidentally recreate Sunglasses at Night and it goes super viral, it's not going super viral because people are like, oh, I like this new song. It's because they're already programmed with that melody in their head. And they're like, I recognize this and I enjoy this because I, for some reason, my memory is telling me this is enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And there's only you so know? many melodies that are enjoyable. There's like well, a limit. Well, melodies that are it's enjoyable. Actually, it's an algorithm. So, yeah. Well, okay. So, so Gonzo, you were talking about uh, earlier this TED talk and I watched that mm-hmm. uh, just so I could understand exactly what he was saying. And essentially what this guy had done, uh, him and his partner, they had uh, taken an entire, well, they, I think they only did, did they do all 12 notes in an octave? I think they, they actually got, yeah, they, they got through the whole octave. Yeah. So they, they, they got one octave, all 12 notes, uh, sharps and flats, and, um, and they made every possible combination of those notes. I've over, seen that, I yeah. forget. Like was it ten, ten different notes in the melody, and using all, um, thir- uh, all twelve, uh, what but piano s- notes? Still, or whatever. syncopation matters. Well, syncopation matters too. But uh, either way, they he kept saying like, yeah, you know, there, there's a very finite amount of melodies. But if you take ten notes, I posted this graphic in the guest chat channel. If you take ten notes and get every possible combination of those notes over uh, using a, a 13 note octave, you can you end up with 75 billion possible combinations, which you know that that's going to cut out a lot of things that are probably unlistenable, like just random combinations of uh of like I don't know a D sharp and an E together yeah. with like a bunch of other shit, things that are going to be unlistenable and not really recognized as music. However, that's still a lot of combinations. Uh, So what you're saying is there are 75 billion potential songs out there, and you still copied Chicky Marina. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, I I do. All right, so I, 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 God, there's a lot of things I have written down. I left my notepad Mm -hmm. in the other room. Um, Go get it. it. But see, there's, there's, okay, all right, give me, give me one. But nobody owns Chicky Marina, right? Rusty, I know, thinks he does. I have the copyright. (laughs) <laughs> Rusty yeah, has Rusty. the copyright for Chicky Morena. Yeah. yeah, Rusty is secretly a Puerto Rican child. <laughs> we had no idea. Another part of the copyright law is that uh, if if I write a song and I post it my Facebook ten years ago and no one it's got one like, no one ever heard it, and then someone makes a viral song similar to it, it's got nothing to do with me, even though I did post it first and I may even have the copyright. I can't prove that they heard my song because only one person did, and it was probably my mom. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, let's mm-hmm. let's first get because I, I I don't think that uh, Gonzo, I don't think you're very interested necessarily in the whole idea of just like the copyright on the melody. I mean, that was a major point, but I think uh, your whole theory on copywriting music is much more interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So so in, let's just try to close up the knife game thing. All right, so. <laughs> In that first video, I thought where I disagree with you is I thought you were incredibly wrong by saying that Miss Susie had a steamboat 
uh, sounded like the knife game. And then in your second video where you did a, uh, a melody shootout where you, you put the knife game melody and then all these other melodies, mm-hmm. the, I, I don't have the thing pulled up. This is what I wanted to play on the um, you know, live so you could all hear it. But your melody for Miss Susie Had a Steamboat that you programmed in did not sound like Miss Susie had a steamboat. I think you took a lot of liberties to kind of make it sound a lot closer to the knife game. <laughs> and if you listen to even the songs that you had on your first video, you can see that those are clearly different songs. The The pacing of the notes are off. The The notes are all different. I actually, I made my own version of it, which I'll, I'll splice in somewhere, maybe right here, uh, just so people can see. Should we do some reactions like we just heard it? <laughs> oh wow! Oh that shit! Was so different. Gonzo school just <laughs> got school. I should have I should have uploaded the videos of something because I, I did want you to hear this. Uh, the problem that I've been having I, I'm having like audio issues, so I couldn't play this audio while recording so everyone could hear. Um, but I programmed in all these songs as well to the same tempo in the same key, and I got like I think it was. 12 out of 27 seven notes were different between the knife game and uh, Miss Susie had a steamboat. Granted, so there you are only a lot copied of half the homework. Well, it's like, so, so I'm wondering, like, do, do you actually think those songs sound similar enough to say that the knife game is a ripoff of Miss Susie had a steamboat? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that, that's your words that, you know, it's a ripoff. I, I'm not saying it's a ripoff, and I'm also not saying that you intentionally, you know, copied anything no, and, like, I know you did that maliciously right but i know you're not saying yeah. that but i mean that definitely was a major point in the video that uh you, you know i i think the last thing i said that you used the clip of was i wanted to make this song sound like it was one that had been around forever and then you say well because it has and then you keep referencing that miss Susie had a steamboat was an original version of the knife game melody and i was that was my initial thing that perturbed me. I was like, what the fuck? That doesn't sound anything the same. <laughs> yeah, well, I think obviously it's not exactly the same, but it's it's similar enough to where I think, and you know, I'm not a lawyer. This is my non-lawyer opinion, but just based on how these lawsuits and these things usually go, I don't think it's different enough to constitute an, like an original work that say like you wanted to, sue somebody for it um they'd say you know well yeah it's not really original enough uh because there's oh and actually this exact thing happened with led zeppelin did you hear about this yeah i did but real real quick Mm -hmm. um hold that thought you say it's it's not similar enough so what i'm saying is whenever i put all the midi notes following the melodies of the the versions of the song that you were playing i got 12 out of 27 that were difference so meaning that the similarities are only 56 percent that's pretty different to say that something's the same and half of it is well but not even the same notes at all you also have to understand that like with these lawsuits sometimes there'll be four notes that someone sues over and two of those notes are different but they still win the suit anyway well yeah sure the court system is fucked up and copywriting a melody is a a very odd thing to take to court, which obviously is why I didn't do anything against Ken Dog. Because I was, I think you even played that clip on the the podcast where I said it, it was petty. It would be petty to do that. Tom. So petty. at what point? So so then I guess the hypocrisy is that I make music, and obviously we're all like you ended your video saying we're all uh, on the shoulders of giants. Uh, nothing is obviously original. Everything has been written has already been written before, and it's just slight variations of it. But the hypocrisy is th- that I didn't do anything. I don't know, like uh, just that I was upset by the idea. Well, yeah, and th- that's exactly that's pretty much exactly what I'm saying because, and I I'm not innocent of this either. You know, I'm not better than than you or or anybody. Th- there was a point where I thought that you know, like I owned the stuff that I created, you know, it kind of makes sense. If you think about it, it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm like, I, I made this melody or I made this song and it's 
you know, and it's original and it's mine. And the hypocrisy comes in when <laughs> you realize like, hold on a second. There, there really isn't anything new under the sun. And this is why the public domain had to be created. It was because basically it was bound to happen. People were bound to create songs that sounded like something that was old. Like with Led Zeppelin, there was a, that one band, I'm, I can't remember their name, but there was, it was like, it was like, was it Taurus or something? They created um, this song. And then a while later, Led Zeppelin made Stairway to Heaven. And the band said, hey, you stole our melody. And what uh-huh. happened was, <laughs> and you know, it's that classic, you know, Stairway to Heaven, you know, sound. And you listen to the, the original and it's like, wow, that actually is, that's really similar. But then the lawyers dug back and they found this 400 year old song called the Jackfish. And uh, there was a, a, a quartet group that recorded it. And it sounds pretty much exactly like Stairway to Heaven. And so, you know, yeah, I think it is hypocritical to say, you know, I created this 100% original thing that no one else can use. Well, what do you mean no one and, else and you, can and you use? Also, and you also use musical, you know, instrumentation, composition that other musicians have used. Yeah, but I but I don't I'm not trying to push any sort of authority on Ken Dog. I'm not telling him he can't use it. I'm saying first off, here's why I got a copyright on the Knife Game song. Is because this was as far as I knew at the time, an original the the melody uh, it sounds like Chicky Morena. I, I guess we can just all agree that it, Chicky Morena sounds pretty close to the Knife Game. That there's like two notes that are different, but it's not different enough that like someone could clearly say it's a different tune. But I copyrighted it because I had this product, this thing that I had created, these lyrics, this uh, not necessarily even just putting it to the actual physical action of playing the Knife Game, um, the chords backing it up, and at that point, a lot of people were saying, oh, yeah, this is instantly public domain. The lyrics are public domain. Anyone can make this. Any company, any uh, uh, website that wants to exploit it and, and make money off of it, any TV show that wants to just play these clips because it's a viral clip and now they can capitalize on it. But then I can't because I have no rights on it. And then if someone did want to claim that they had a copyright on it, they could do a takedown of me. So then I could be the one who ends yep. up getting the shit for like the copyright uh, cuck mm-hmm. yeah i then i would be the copyright cuck so just to cover my basis i said all right i can see that this thing is getting big i should probably register it and register the copyright so if something ever did came up then i at least have done this early on it's clear it's in the system that i have a copyright on this now now if something does come up ken dog comes out with a song if he's going to claim that he's never heard the knife game melody, I mean, that would be kind of ridiculous because it, <laughs> it was worldwide. That's right. Fucking millions of views. Uh, he's not a fan of German television, evidently. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. You have just listened to a clip of the Trash Rats podcast. And so now you got to click that Patreon link below and get that, that shit in 8K and listen right now. You won't be disappointed. And then also, uh, you click the click the other link to listen to the full episode. Yeah, and click the other link to listen to the full episode. All right, that's perfect. <laughs>